ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدى هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار indeed the praise is for allah we praise him we seek his help and we seek his forgiveness we seek refuge with allah from the evils that are within ourselves and from our bad deeds Whomsoever Allah guides no one can lead this person astray and whomsoever Allah leads astray there is no guide for him I bear witness that none has the right to be worshiped except for Allah who is along with our partners and I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is the servant of Allah and the last messenger of Allah to all of mankind O you who believe Fear Allah with the right that he should be feared with and do not die unless you are Muslims upon the deen of Al-Islam. O mankind, fear your Lord who has created you from a single person and from that person created his mate and from them to scatter countless men and women throughout the earth and fear Allah from whom you demand your mutual rights and do not cut off the relations with the wombs that have bore you. Indeed, Allah is a watcher over you. O you who believe fear Allah and say that which is correct and upright in order that Allah may rectify for you your deeds and forgive you of your sins and whomsoever obeys Allah and his messenger has achieved a tremendous achievement as to what follows certainly the most truthful speech is the book of Allah and the best guidance is the guidance of the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the most evil of the affairs of the newly invented matters in the deen and every newly invented matter in the deen is innovation and every innovation is going astray and every going astray is in the hellfire allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentions in the quran describing the believers innama al mu'minun ikhwa indeed the believers are only brothers to one another and this includes the women also that the believing women that they are sisters to one another and the believing men to the believing women are brothers and sisters of one another and this is due to that which we have in common of our belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our belief in the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam that which makes us brothers and sisters is our testimony of la ilaha illallah and our testimony of Muhammad or Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that none has the right to be worshiped except for Allah and Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the messenger of Allah this is what unites us this is what has established the brotherhood and the sisterhood amongst the muslims with that being said they are matters that are connected to brotherhood and sisterhood in al-islam And from that is what we have in the narration an Abi Hurairah radiyallahu an qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam al-mu'min mir'atul mu'min 
The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he mentioned that the believer is the mirror of the believer. The believer is the mirror of the believer. And the scholars they mention, what is the mirror to you? The mirror is that which shows you your beauty, and the mirror is that which shows you your faults or defects. The mirror is that which you look at to check yourself, to see if how you are looking is, in a, is a presentable look. And likewise with one another, we check ourselves. We look at ourselves. We advise one another. We have sincerity for one another. For the mirror doesn't lie to you. The mirror shows you your good and the mirror shows you your bad. Sheikh Muhammad bin Saleh al-Uthaymeen rahimahullah ta'ala, he, went, he mentioned that the believer is on the level of the status of a mirror to his brother in faith. And it is not possible for the believer to conceal a good character of his brother. That if he sees his brother having some good, he tells his brother about that good. And he encourages his brother to continue upon doing that good. And he puts the zeal into the heart of his brother by pushing him to remain consistent upon that good. By saying that you are upon good. And that for you is a reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is pleased with what you are doing, and other than that, from the good works. This is how a believer is a believe is a mirror to a believer. When the believer sees the good in his brother or sister, he encourages him or her with continuing upon the good, making dua for one's brother or sister in Al Islam. And if the believer sees something wrong, or something evil in his brother or sister, then he clarifies the matter to him. He clarifies the matter to him in the best way, with gentleness and kindness, with wisdom, because you want good for your brother and your sister in Al-Islam. If you see something about your brother that's not befitting, you don't leave your brother to continue on with that behavior or with that fault. Just as if you was to look in your brother's face and you see that he has something on the side of his mouth of food or other than that, you would say to your brother, Akhi, wipe your mouth. A sister would say to her sister, Sister, wipe your mouth. Or if the sister sees her sister with a portion of her hair sticking out of her hijab, she's going to say to her sister, Fix your hijab, fix your khimar, fix your headscarf, your hair is showing. She's not going to leave her to continue on with a portion of her hair showing when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded the women to cover their bodies. This is how a believer is to another believer, like the mirror. So when a person sees something evil or something wrong in his brother or sister, then be straightforward in a sense meaning you tell them, but use the best manner in conveying that message to them. And warn your brother or sister against disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Warn them against falling into the traps of the shaitan. And again, with gentleness. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned, إِنَّ اللَّهَ رَفِيقٌ وَيُحِبُّ الرِّفْقِ فِي كُلِّ شَيْءٍ وَكَمَا قَالَ sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Indeed Allah is gentle. And he loves gentleness in all things. And this is the origin of how we deal with one another. Gentleness. We correct one another with gentleness. Shaykh Uthaymeen rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned, This is the one who is sincere. This is the one who has given you advice. And this is the one who is truly a brother to you. This is the one who is truly a sister to you. The one that when you have good with you, they mention to you your good. They make dua for you about your good. They encourage you to continue to do good. They push you to do more good. 
This is truly the one who is sincere and loves you for the sake of Allah. This is truly a brother to you or a sister to you. But as for the one who conceals your faults and he only mentions to you your good, this person may even lie to you and exaggerate the good that you have with you. We don't need people around us to be yes men and yes women. We need people around us who are going to be sincere. Pull our coat when our coats need to be pulled. But some individuals, they like that they have a group of yes men or yes women around them. A group of bootlickers and butt kisses, brown noses. This is not from the deen of Islam. You just constantly tell the person, yeah, you're doing good. The person doesn't make no mistakes. The person doesn't have any faults. And this doesn't mean that you attack your brother or sister when you see a fault. But you have to say something. How can you be considered a true friend? A sincere friend? A sincere brother or sister when you see your brother and sister doing wrong and you say nothing? You continue to remain silent, letting them continue upon that path of destruction. Where is the sincerity? Where is the brotherhood? Where is the sisterhood? When we look at the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he corrected the most beloved of the people to him. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not discriminate. We all know the famous statement. If my daughter Fatima would have stolen, I would have cut her hand off. Because the Prophet Sallallahu does not discriminate when it comes to enjoying the good and forbidding the evil. So even if it was his own family, he would have taken action. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam corrected Aisha, radiallahu anha, when he came into the home and she had a curtain there with images on there. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stood at the door and he did not enter into the home. And she seen the displeasure on his face. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he cut up the curtains to disfigure the images. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he corrected Aisha radiallahu anha that night when she followed him to the graveyard. And she thought that he was possibly going to the house of another wife. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam corrected Aisha when his other wife sent some food to his house and Aisha slapped the plate out of the individual's hand who was bringing the food. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gathered up a food and then commanded that one of her vessels is taken and given to the other wife whose vessel was broken. And who is Aisha radiallahu anha? أَحَبُّ nas إِلَى نَبِيِّنَا مُحَمَّدِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ The most beloved of the people to our Prophet صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ When he was asked, Ya Rasulullah, مَنْ أَحَبُّ nas إِلَيْكَ قَالَ Aisha. O Messenger of Allah, who is the most beloved of the people to you? He said who? Aisha. But that did not stop him from correcting her when she made a mistake. That did not stop him from advising her when she needed advice. But some of us, because of this so-called love we have for people, we don't correct them, we don't advise them. That's not true love. True love is in the example of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with his beloved wife, Aisha radiallahu anha, aqulu qawli hadha astaghfirullah li wa lakum. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he mentioned المؤمن إلى المؤمن كالبليان يشد بعضه بعضا that the believer to the believers like a building each part strengthening the other 
Each part supporting the other. This is the relationship that we're supposed to have with one another. That we strengthen one another. We fortify one another. We better and improve one another. Never should be the case that we are causing harm to one another. By being silent about the mistakes that we have amongst one another. About the mistakes that we have in our lives. And we are aware. And we say nothing to one another about our mistakes. This is not from Iman. This is not from Islam. This is not from that which pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is not from what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us. Some Muslims, unfortunately, along with being silent about the mistakes of their brothers, they hide the good of their brothers, and when the mistake happens, they don't say nothing to the brother, but they spread it amongst the people. What an evil individual this is. Your brother makes a mistake. You have the ability to contact your brother and advise him. But you don't do that. Rather you go amongst the people spreading the mistake. But when the brother does something good, you don't spread that. Listen to the words of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abu Huraira, he mentioned, كَانَ مِن دُعَائِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min jaris su. Abu Huraira radiallahu an, he mentioned, from the supplication of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to say, O oh Allah, I seek refuge with you from the evil neighbor. And we know about the evil neighbors. Either from direct experience or from secondhand knowledge. We know some of us have evil neighbors here in Lefrak. Unfortunately. They smoke in their homes. The smell of the smoke comes in our homes. On the balcony, they throw cigarettes. It's coming down on your balcony other than that. We know about the evil neighbors. So the Prophet said a lot, they were them used to seek refuge with Allah from the evil neighbor because the evil neighbor can make life miserable. The evil neighbor makes you want to move and relocate. Then he would say, وَمِنْ زَوْجٍ تُشَيِّبُنِي قَبَلَ الْمَشِيبِ And I seek refuge with you from a wife that caused me to have gray hair before the time of having gray hair. SubhanAllah wa bihamdi. That's heavy. The Prophet sought refuge with Allah from a wife that caused him to have gray hair before the time of having gray hair. What is she doing to this man? Stressing him out. Constantly complaining. Never satisfied. He can do no good. Or as the prophet mentioned, some of the women there, they say when they see one thing that a man has done wrong, مَا I've never seen no good for you. After the man has done good to her for a long period of time. But also, Barakallah Fikum, don't think that this is restricted to the woman stressing the men out. Some of these brothers are stressing the sisters out and causing them to have gray hair before the time. And then when they complain about the gray hair, stop stressing the sister out. Stop being a narcissist. Stop the gaslighting. Stop the emotional oppression. And definitely stop the physical oppression. Men and women, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created them for one another so that there is mawadda and rahma between them. That there is love and mercy between them. That's the origin between a husband and wife. Allah has made it this way and decreed it to be this way. But when we look at some of the marriages, all we see is stress, turmoil, chaos, fitna. 
The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to seek refuge with Allah from this. Then he mentioned, وَمَنْ وَلَدٍ يَكُونْ عَلَيَّ رَبَّهِ And from a child that is a Lord over me. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sought refuge with Allah from the child becoming his master. And we see this in this day and time. The children are disrespectful. The children talk back to the parents. We even find children raising their hands to their parents. SubhanAllah bihamdi. In my day and the day before my day, you wouldn't even finish a sentence. Your hand wouldn't even raise all the way up before you was dealt with. And then after you was dealt with by your parent, your mother, here comes her brother. Here comes the other uncle and the other uncle. They were morals back in the day. Amongst Muslims as well as non-Muslims alike. Believe me when I tell you. Certain things were not allowable. But, but as the time goes on, and this is from the signs of the hour, the children become masters over their parents. The parents have no control anymore. And the government hasn't made it any better. Because now it's difficult for you to even discipline your child even according to the Islamic discipline. We're not talking about child abuse. This is wrong. We're talking about discipline according to Islam. It has been legislated by Allah and the Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's to the point we can't even discipline our children Islamically. We have to make dua to Allah and seek refuge with Allah from this. وَمَنْ مَالًا يَكُونْ عَلَيَّ عَذَابًا And he sought refuge from wealth that is a punishment on him. Not every time money is a blessing. At times money can be a, a punishment for you. Money can be a fitna for you. It destroys your life. And we wonder sometimes when we make dua to Allah to make us rich, Allah doesn't answer that dua because Allah loves us and He doesn't want us to be destroyed by that money. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned, and this is the shahid, وَمِنْ خَلِيلٍ مَاكِرٍ عَيْنُهُ تَرَانِي وَقَلْبُهُ يَرْعَانِي إِنْ رَأَ حَسَنَةً دَفَنَهَا وَإِذَا رَأَ سَيِّئَةً أَذَاعَهَا And I seek refuge with you, O Allah, from a conniving friend whose eye sees me, but his heart is waiting for me to fall into error. If he sees a good that I have done, he conceals it. And if he sees an evil that I have done, he spreads it amongst the people. SubhanAllah wa bihamdi. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sought refuge with Allah from a conniving friend. What kind of friend is this? When you do good, conceals it. Doesn't mention it. But as soon as you make a mistake, tells the whole world. And if he is happy with your mistakes, this is from the ayat or the sifat of the munafiqeen. Call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In tamsaskum hasana to su'hum. Wa in tusibukum sayyi'ah yafrahu biha. If some if some good touches you, if some good comes to you, it bothers them. It makes them upset. But if some calamity befalls you, if some evil befalls you, they are happy with that. Allah is speaking about the munafiqeen. That whenever some good came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Sahaba, it would make them upset. It would bother them. The slightest good. But soon as a calamity struck, if they lost a battle or something happened to one of them, of a calamity, they are happy with the calamities that befall the Muslims. If you are happy with evil befalling your brother and sister, but sad when good happens to them, know that you have one of the characteristics of the munafiqeen. Allah mentions this in the Quran. He said, not my words. He described the munafiqeen with this description. If you have this description, you have a trait, you have a characteristic of the munafiqeen. I'm not saying you are a full-blown munafiq, but you definitely have one of their characteristics. 
Be happy when good comes to the Muslims. And whenever evil befalls the Muslims, be sad. Because we are one body. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned, مَثَلُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ فِي تَوَادِّهِمْ وَتَرَاحُمِهِمْ وَتَعَاطُفِهِمْ مَثَلُ الْجَسِدِ إِذَا اشْتَكَ مِنْهُ عُدْوًا تَدَعَ لَهُ سَائِرُ جَسِدِ بِسَهَرْ وَالْحُمَّى The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned, the example of the believers and their love for one another, their mutual love, and in their mutual mercy, and their, with their mutual affection for one another, is the example of one body. If one body part complains of pain, then the entire body has insomnia and complains of fever. إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْبَرَ Indeed, the believers are nothing but brothers and sisters of one another. If something is happening to one of our brothers or sisters, whether we know them or not, we should feel that pain. We should feel that sorrow. We should make dua for them. Never should it be the case that we see Muslims going through things and we are happy that they are facing calamities. This is how the munafiqeen behave towards the believers. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us mirrors for one another, encouraging with the good, warning against the evil. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us sincere in our dealings with one another. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from amongst those who hear a good word and follow it. We seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evils that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sought refuge from. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to truly make us like one body, supporting one another. Akulu kawli hadha astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa subhanaka allahu wa bihamdik ashadu an la ilaha ila anta astaghfiruka wa atubi ilayk. Akam as-salam.